Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel devoted to camping, hiking, and backpacking. If you're into that stuff, you should be subscribed. Click that button if you aren't. Let's get to it. Today I want to talk about the third of my big three items in my backpacking kit, namely my shelter. Okay, so the big three in backpacking equipment consist of your backpack, your sleep system, and your shelter. Now last time I talked about backpacks, this time I'm going to be talking about my shelter, and next time I'm going to be talking about my sleep system. So your shelter basically consists of what is going to keep you and your stuff safe from the elements. Typically what you find is that backpackers either use some kind of tent system or some kind of hammock, hammock. system. And the reason I say kind of is that some people just throw up a tarp on a ridge line and some people just get in a little bivy sack. So there are variants to these kinds of systems, but typically you either have tent campers or hammock, hammock campers. I personally am a tent camper. I do own a hammock. It's nothing special, but I just like having something that I can get into and get away from the outdoors if I need to. I like having a place for my stuff to get out of the elements, even if I'm not. So although I recognize that there are benefits to hammock camping, it's just not something that I have wanted to do at this time. So when it comes to tents, you've basically got two major styles, freestanding and non-freestanding. A freestanding tent is something like my Mountain Hardware Light Wedge 3 Dry Pitch. Now the cool thing about a freestanding tent is that it is completely self-contained. Once you pitch the tent, you can literally pick it up and walk around with it. It is not in any way reliant upon stakes or guy lines or trekking poles or anything else from the outside to keep it in the shape it needs to be to function as a shelter. So what's great about it is that you can basically pitch that tent. Pinch his tits. Anywhere, whether you are in gravel or sand or the deck of somebody's cabin, your freestanding tent will work. Non-freestanding tents do rely on stakes, guy lines, and probably even a trekking pole or some other kind of structural element for them to work. And so if you are in ground that doesn't take very well to the tent stakes, maybe a hard slab of granite, somebody's deck, sand, you're going to have difficulty dealing with a non-freestanding tent. So why would anybody want one? Well, because they are very lightweight. My Mountain Hardware freestanding tent, which is a good tent, ran about $300, weighs 107 ounces. It is extremely heavy because it's got flexible poles that retain its structure, and it is also a double wall tent, which means that not only do you have the tent itself, but you also have a rain fly that goes over the top of it, which nearly doubles the amount of material that you're carrying with you. Now again, there's a lot of advantages to this tent. I don't need to worry about where I'm going to set it up. Further, this particular tent has the added advantage of basically hanging off of clips from the poles, which separates the whole thing from the rain fly. And what that does is allow you to actually set the tent up inside the rain fly. So if it's raining when you get to your campground, you can actually set the rain fly up and then crawl under it into dryness and set up the tent from the inside. So this is a very cool tent, but you do pay the price in weight. Now, a slightly less heavy option is my fairly inexpensive kind of Walmart brand quality backpacking tent. This is a Stand Sport. I don't even know the model. I've had this forever. Basically, same idea as the Mountain Hardware, except instead of being a three-person tent, which, as anyone who has ever bought a tent knows, is a fairly liberal estimate of how much room it has. This is a two-person tent, which really means it's pretty much a one-person tent with a little bit of room for your stuff. It also is a double wall, which means it's got a rain fly as as well as a mesh tent on the inside. Typical pole setup runs about 75 ounces, but again, this was a fairly cheap tent. Now we come to my actual backpacking tent. So this is the one that I would take if I wasn't trying to have a real luxury setup. It is also what I would take only if I knew that I was going to be able to set it up right, because this is a non-freestanding tent. This is the 3F 
UL Gear Lanshan 2. This is a pretty popular tent in the backpacking community because although it is lightweight, coming in at 40 ounces, it's also a double wall tent and it is not very expensive. Now, one thing you need to know about the Lanshan 2 is that it is not self-contained. Not only does it rely on stakes and guy lines to keep its shape, you also have to have two trekking poles that are responsible for holding the roof pitch at the top of the tent. So if you don't typically hike with trekking poles, you're going to either have to bring a pair or get a tent pole of the correct size to take with you. You will not be able to pitch the Lanshan 2 if all you bring is what is in the bag. Now, of course, that's part of the reason why it doesn't weigh that much. It's pretty easy to get a lightweight tent when you don't include everything in the tent that you need to make the tent work. Now, one more thing I will say about the Lanshan 2 is that it is not immediately obvious how to set it up. You do have to set it up correctly or it's gonna be a little bit of a disaster. It's not gonna work right and you're probably gonna think there's something wrong with it when really there isn't. It's a good solid tent. It doesn't weigh that much. It doesn't cost that much and it will do the job. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the ground sheet. A small tarp that you lay down on the ground and it forms a barrier between the dirt or rock or snow and your tent material. That's going to slightly increase your comfort, but it's also going to increase the life of your tent. This particular one is a red camp, weighs 11 ounces, and it is pretty much the perfect size for the Lanshan 2. You want to make sure when you get one of these that you're not just going out and getting some giant tarp to set down. The reason is that the tent is going to push the tarp down, and so if it rains at night, it's going to collect the water and probably defeat the material of your tent. You want to know your tent's footprint, which is the amount of ground space that it takes up, and get a ground sheet that is the correct size. All right, well, that is it for this time. Next video, I will be looking at my sleep system. If you are not subscribed, go ahead and make sure you click that bell so that you will know when videos drop if you have found value in this video, would you mind clicking like? And let me know in the comments what you use for your shelter system. I'm always looking for upgrades. I'm always looking for tips and tricks to share with you. And many times I get them from you. So until next time, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim. Take it easy.